Eyes on Longmont, offering a diversity of topics about our community that will inform and entertain you. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Eyes on Longmont. Good morning, I'm Greg Holden, a photographer in Longmont, Colorado. Welcome to my studio. Come on in, I'll show you some of my work. Hi, I'm uh, Greg, my name's Greg Holden. I'm a photographer from Longmont, Colorado. Um, I'm here today, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about creativity and the creative vision uh, that I put into my photography. A little bit of background about me. My dad was an art teacher and an artist. I uh, grew up in a home full of art, mostly oil paintings, original oil paintings of my dad uh, that my dad painted. And uh, so that really inspired my love of art from an early age, just being subjected to that constant uh, artwork throughout the house. Uh, my dad mostly worked as more of an impressionistic painter and not necessarily realistic type work. It was more artistic. And so that really uh, inspired my photography when I got into photography. Uh, my dad was also partially colorblind, which is interesting as an artist. Uh, so he didn't always use all the right colors uh, when he painted things. And I think that too has uh, played into my photography that not everything has to be exactly as we see it. We can put an artistic spin uh, onto our artwork. Um, for example, these images, you can see that my dad painted this power plant uh, which is normally all gray, but he used a wide variety of colors um, in his interpretation of the plant. Uh, similarly, when I had a, a high school project to uh, do a drawing of something in my house, I painted these uh, ice skates that were all black in this dark alcove of my basement, uh, yet I filled the, fa the painting with all kinds of color that wasn't there in the original scene as I saw it, but that's how I artistically interpreted it. As far as photography, I have a lot of books. I love going to used bookstores, searching for lesser known photographers or local photographers that you wouldn't necessarily come across in a Google search. Um, so I have over 180 books uh, now and only a few of them are on photo photographic instruction. Most of them are portfolios or um, monographs of various photographers. Um, so I I'm a fan of all the masters, uh, Cortez, Stieglitz, Weston, uh, but I also follow a lot of these lesser known photographers like A. Aubrey Bourdain or Vivian Meyer. I'm also inspired by a lot of artists. Uh, as I mentioned, my dad being a, a painter, um, I always had a lot of art books around the house. So inspired by a lot of arts such as Hopper or Van Gogh or Wyeth. And one quote I came across in photography that's really kind of stood with me and I think has really shaped my vision as a photographer is this quote by Elliot Erwitt. It says, to me, Photography is an art of observation. It's about finding something interesting in an ordinary place. I found it has little to do with the things you see and everything to do with the way you see them. So the presentation I may give today is called Learning to See Creatively. Um, this is one I've given to many camera clubs across the country um, and it's constantly developing as, as my style and my influences are developing. So I start off with this picture from Blackwater Falls in West Virginia. Uh, living back on the East Coast, this was a, a favorite spot for photography clubs to take workshops to or field trips to. Um, and you can see this wide frame. This is the shot that everyone else takes. In fact, they've put a nice little boardwalk, a set of stairs down to this little landing, so you know exactly where to set your camera up. 
And, and I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay copying uh, what everyone else is doing for starting. Um, so this is the wide shot I took. And it's okay. It's a decent postcard image, but it's an image I've seen thousands of times. And so whenever I approach something like this, I sometimes will start with the typical photo that everyone expects, but then I say, what can I do differently? How can I put my own creative stamp uh, on this image and create an image that's unique to me? So I saw this one little part of the waterfall and I, I changed up lenses, got a longer lens and zoomed in, and this was the final image I came up with. So on the onset, you cannot tell it's Black Waterfalls in West Virginia. It could be any waterfalls. Uh, but that was not my purpose. My purpose was not to document a specific waterfall. It's just to capture something that I appreciated. And then converting it to black and white helped really emphasize some of the movement and the jagged rocks uh, that I was focusing on. I recently took a trip up into the Arctic in Svalbard, and we we're walking along the tundra, and this is the image I saw. And again, a nice landscape, shows a sense of place with this semi-frozen lake. Uh, the mountains in the background, but that's a picture everyone else takes. That's everyone else had their iPhones out taking that picture. I wanted to isolate down to a different piece of it, and I was really captivated by the lake and the, the ice on the lake and the jagged edges along the lake. So I said, well, let me isolate down to that part of the image, and I turned it into more of an abstract, uh, going very, very dark with my image, so it's not immediately recognizable exactly what it is. So it's really about the play of lights and darks and the curves wiggling through the image. Similarly, uh, my family and I used to go to um, Shinkatik Island in Virginia to vacation, and the Shinkatik or the Assateek Lighthouse, a uh, very popular lighthouse with these bright red and white bands that keep it well painted. Again, very heavily photographed lighthouse, and everyone takes this wide shot of the lighthouse. And I'm walking up to this uh, lighthouse, and I was just captivated by this little scene of these dark shadows uh, on the back of the lighthouse and the little building next to it. And so I didn't have my camera with me, and so I just pulled out my smartphone, and I, I captured this picture. And so normally people say this is the wrong time of day, the light is too harsh, the shadows are too dark. Um, but for this type of image, it worked out well. Now, later on that vacation, I wanted to go back to that spot with my real camera, my tripod, my filters, and all my doodads uh, to take a nice high resolution uh, image of this same thing. I went the exact same time of day, stood in virtually the exact same spot, but I could never replicate the image. The lighting was just a little different, conditions were just a little different. So I think this is a lesson of you have to take the photo when you see it. And sometimes you're not going to get that high resolution photo because you're not going to have all your fancy gear with you. In this case, just a smartphone. Um, and I can blow this up to a, a modest size image, uh, but I'm never going to be able to make large prints of it just because the resolution isn't there. But I'm still training my eye to see. I come across things, I take the moment to compose and capture, even if it's just with my smartphone, because then I'm learning how to see these different things. And I can apply those lessons on later photos. Similarly, I was getting dressed one day and I looked down at my trousers and I noticed my, my buttons and on these twill pants and a lot of detail uh, in these pants and some of the stitching and tailoring that went into them. Uh, so that weekend, I, I pulled all my pants out of my closet and I threw them all on the ground and got out my macro lens and I'm taking all these close-up shots of my pants. And I, I created this series I call Inside My Pants. And I posted it on social media and I got a lot of laughs just from the title alone. Uh, but again, this is not necessarily going to be award-winning photo. I'll probably never submit this photo to your know, macro photography monthly magazine or something like that. But it's just about focusing on graphic shapes, learning how to see different things, and just learning how to compose. Um, so I did a couple more. Again, not a necessarily award-winning photo, but playing with the lights and the darks, the shapes, and just kind of sorting out in my mind what makes an interesting, compelling image. And then I can use those tips later on. Similarly, I was drinking a soda one day, and I sat down the, the can a little harsh on the table, and a bunch of the soda popped, uh, popped up onto the lid. And so it was very effervescent, and I liked all the bubbles uh, that was going on there. So I spent the afternoon shaking up my soda to get it all nice and fizzy and splashing it over the lid and taking shots with my macro lens uh, to, get, to fill the frame with all these bubbles and just a little window light coming in the side. Made a huge mess over my kitchen, uh, but I created some interesting images in the process. 
I like to go find old ru rusted cars. Uh, so here I am up in Pennsylvania, a private collection, and I just love the curves on this car. A lot of interesting details on it, and of course it had a lot of color and stuff from the mildew and the, the dust that had collected on it over the years. And so this is the shot I originally saw uh, with a nice curve of that fender uh, and then some details from the door handle. Um, and this, this I thought was a nice photo. This is, this is what I saw. This is my first instinct and this is the photo I captured. Uh, but I don't want to let rest on my laurels, right? There could be some other photos out there that are also equally interesting. So then I took a different photo of the front door, still focusing on that handle, but now a totally different look with a black and white, more focused on the handle and some of the edge lines uh, from the different doors. And so I created a different image of the same subject. So constantly evolving and looking for different things and not just resting on one photo. So photos can be come out of anywhere. And so here I am at the ballpark, uh, Camden Yards in Maryland, and I'm there with my overpriced bratwurst and my overpriced beer waiting for my friends to join me. And I'm looking out and I see the chairs, uh, all the empty chairs in front of me. And I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I like that kind of repeating pattern. So I set my food down. Again, I didn't have my, my big camera with me, just had my smartphone. Pulled it out, and this is the photo I shot. Um, the engineer in me wanted to square everything up, nice even lines, has a nice rim light on these chairs. And it's an interesting photo from a, a patterns kind of thing. But I thought there could be something more to it. And so I said, what else can I do to enhance the scene and make it something more interesting. So sometimes it's just about tilting your perspective. And so in this case, I tilted the camera and then I ended up making this one a monochrome version because I determined the color really wasn't important for this repeating pattern. Um, it was more about the edges and the rim light and some of these lines and shapes going on. So then, so that's just you know an idea I had. And so again, not award-winning photo, but I, that sticks in my mind as, hey, that's an idea I need to look for in the future. So fast forward a few years, I'm at a workshop in an abandoned school in Pennsylvania, and I'm up in the balcony and in a sea of chairs, and it kind of, these kind of green colors of the chairs reminded me of that picture I took of the ballpark years ago. So again, first instinct was fill the frame, uh, show the repeating pattern, uh, and this was the initial shot I took. Um, but I knew I was going to do something else with it in post-processing. Um, and what I came up with was a squared off one, black and white, a little bit more high contrast, just to really emphasize the lines and the shapes and that little edge, edge lighting going on with the chairs. But then later in the day, uh, after my workshop I completed, I'm down on the floor, I'm looking back at those chairs, and I go, yeah, I really like those chairs. Those are really neat. Um, but the light has changed, the conditions have changed, my perspective is different, I'm down on the floor looking at a different angle, and this is the scene I saw. And so I said, you know, I already have a good photo from before, I like that one I took of the balcony, but I don't rest on that one photo. I say, what else can I come up with? And so I saw this other thing, and this one I think I like even more. Um, I think it's a good mix of the darks, uh, but it's not black and white, but still got a lot of color into it, still got the repeating pattern, but it's a very different look than the photo I took previously. I uh, was so on a trip with some photography friends to Cary Furnace in Pittsburgh, and we're down there in the, in the bay, and this huge piece of machinery there, these, this thing was good 10 feet wide, and I really just liked the intersection of those two wheels, and maybe that was the engineer in me uh, liking all those primary shapes like circles. Uh, so I said, how can I, like all the photos we can talk about with the waterfalls and the landscapes, how can I isolate down to some of the things that excite me the most about this scene? And so for me, it was about that area in the middle where the two circles uh, intersect and there's a lot of texture and grit on those um, openings. So this is the final photo I came up with. And again, you can't get a sense of scale anymore of taking that away from you. This could be a very small thing, um, but that's not important. To me, it was about those shapes and about emphasizing that texture. Um, and then a lot of selective dodging and burning to get some good separation between the two um, openings there. I like going to botanical gardens too. And so again, a, a, a trip with some friends and I see this little plant and I show you these kind of behind the scenes photos just to show you that sometimes the things are the littlest things that if you're just not paying attention, you'll just walk right by them looking for the big luscious plant or something. And so here's this little plant about the size of a dinner plate 
And I just love those petals, how they're overlapping each other and nice round and there's a nice little soft light coming in from the window. So got out my, again, close-up lens and this is the shot I took. Originally was envisioning a shot on the left, the color version, um, and that's the way I saw it. That's the way I kind of envisioned it. Um, but then later on, I was kind of doing an exercise with my, some of my photos, taking some of my favorite color photos and seeing if I can create a compelling monochrome version of that same photo. So that's what you, the result of that you see on the right there. And I think the monochrome one really emphasizes that curve, going, that S curve going right through the middle of the frame, emphasizes the little white frills on the edge of the plant uh, leaves. And when I ever ask people, uh, when I compare these two side by side and share them with people, 80% of the people like the monochrome one better. And which is kind of surprising to me because I, I'm a little partial to the color, but that's the way I saw it. That's the way I first envisioned it. But I think that's something we need to learn about creativity is that my, my creative instincts might be different than someone else's. And it's not that mine are right or theirs are right. It's just different ways of portraying the same thing. So I love showing these two side by side to show how two images can be uh, presented very differently and get very different emotions out of them. Um, and then you get to see who likes one or the other. So here's me in uh, Glacier National Park um, in Montana, and we're walking along this uh, boardwalk, and I saw this little cluster of ferns. And my wife's always taking these behind the scenes photos of me. Uh, she has a whole series of Greg taking photos. And so this one's interesting because you can see just how small that little collection of ferns is. Much like the little plant we just saw, sometimes the little scenes can be overlooked. This one's kind of overshadowed by some other trees, but I knew I could get in there close and zoom in and really isolate the ferns and the things I saw that I liked. So this was the sh shot I took. And in my mind, it was more impressive than what the camera registered. Uh, with all the green, it just kind of washes out. You don't really get distinction between the ferns. Uh, you can see some of the leaf litter underneath, some of those white dead leaves underneath, and that was really distracting. And so I said, well, how can I clean that up? How can I present it a little bit differently? So I ended up converting this one to monochrome and then going in and doing some selective editing to bring out um, some of the ferns to create a little bit more depth uh, in the image. And then also alleviated the leaf litter issue I had underneath by darkening all those shadows. And so again, it wasn't necessarily the original thought I had in my mind when I took the photo, but with some further editing, I was able to get something that I was really pleased with. I love going to beaches and looking for interesting patterns in the sand. Uh, so this is out in California and I uh, love the black sand on here and this rock and composed this uh, interesting little curves, kind of like the letter R um, with the rock there. And this, this is the, again, the first image I saw and I kind of liked it like this. Uh, I like that smoothness on the right and then the, the ripples on the left. But then after I took this photo, I said, well, maybe there's other photos, much like the car door we saw earlier. Maybe there's other ways to represent this exact same scene. So I flipped it on side, composing differently. Very, very different look. I haven't moved the rock. I haven't changed anything. Only I've changed my perspective. And again, that's something we see with creativity is that you need to look at things from different angles. And sometimes your first instinct may yield a great picture, but there could be other options out there too. So you need to keep working the scene, as they call it, and trying different angles, trying different settings. Here's another rock on the same beach, uh, kind of different look. I, this one, I emphasize the red a lot more in post-processing. I call this one Comet, because it looks like a comet streaking through the night sky. And then I also like to do swipes uh, at the beach. Uh, so this is a sunrise at the beach, and I'm panning my camera. Uh, with a slow shutter speed, again, in that, that swipe of color. So this is a case where I'm creating something I don't even see. I just see the potential with the orange colors in the sky and the blue of the water and the little highlights from the breaking waves. And I know there's something there, but I just need to create it in this case, in this case with the long exposure creating that image. So let's talk a little bit more about abstracts. And I've already shown you a couple of examples. So this one uh, was at a gardens and there were some tulips. Uh, and these ones are little tulip buds. And I've been to this garden every year for their tulip festival and photographed the tulips. I've done wide shots, I've done close-ups, all kinds of different things. And so I'm there for the fourth or fifth year in a row 
and I said, I need to do something different. I've already done all those other shots. What else can I do that's different? How can I challenge myself to come up with something new? So thinking about that beach photo where I'm like, hey, when I swipe it, I create some interesting color splash. Like maybe I could do that with the flowers. And so I do this, this color um, swipe and I get this interesting photo. And I think this is a great photo. I think this one's, this one's a real keeper. And so a couple weeks later, I'm at my local camera club and we have a, a guest uh, photographer, professional photographer in. And I show it to him. I say, look at this photo. It, didn't this turn out really well? I'm hoping to enter this into this abstract competition coming up at this local gallery. And he looked at it and said, it, yeah, it's not abstract enough. It's, it's not, it's not going to do well. And I was so crestfallen. It's like here, my creativity, I was really jazzed about this image. I was really impressed with what I came up with. And this guy just really burst my bubble. And so I didn't listen to him. I still entered the contest at the, at the local gallery. Well, turns out I wasn't selected. And so I, know, I, was, I was really bummed then. I was like, wow, gosh, he, maybe he was right. And I was like, no, don't listen to him. He's just a doubter. Like, and that's the thing with art. Like photography is a type of art. And just like any art, there's going to be people that love it and people that don't like it. And that's just how it goes. Everyone has a different opinion and a different style that they appreciate. So I held on to this image and a year or so later, there's another opportunity for me to enter it in a competition, actually even bigger competition, na national wide competition and many more entries than this little gallery I exhibited, uh, tried to exhibit it in. And I entered it and not only did it get accepted, it won first place in the abstract category. So I think the lesson I really took away from this is just because one person says your work is not good enough or not right enough for a certain venue, that may be true for that venue, but there might be other venues, other takers out there uh, that might be interested in your work. So you got to really stick to your own convictions of what you think is an interesting photo. So I took this one, um, uh, I'm on a photography class that I'm teaching and I'm showing this swipe technique and how we can create these interesting images. And whenever I present this at camera clubs, I always quiz, quiz the members of the club, the, what, is, what is this? What have I taken a picture of? And with this swipe technique, you can't immediately tell what it is. And so I get a lot of question, uh, responses that it's scarves, uh, it's a swash of paint, um, and no one can usually guess what it is. Um, and what it was is just a bunch of kayaks. They were horrible lighting, they were in shadow, and so I had to do this long exposure to get enough brightness into the image, but that long exposure made the background very, very white, very overexposed, and then brought out the color in those kayaks. And so I'm creating something out of nothing. And that's really the most exciting part of creative photography to me, when I create something that no one else can see because you can't see it, I had to create it. So uh, I have a couple of photos here, some wood. Uh, and so much like some of the things we've been seeing with curves and lines, I try to incorporate both of those elements. And I just love this piece of wood. And I'll show you in a minute what this was that I photographed. But I just love the colors, the oranges and the blues. And we got some curves going in there. Um, but there's a bunch of different compositions I came up with. Uh, I did one that's more vertical, kind of showing several knots. Um, of the wood and so different compositions. So constantly working the subject to come up with different interpretations of the subject. So here's what it was. This was a door at a sh an old shed. I was playing mini golf of all things with my family. And I've been to this mini golf many, many times. I'd seen this shed in the corner of the property many times, never thought anything of it. Uh, and then one time we were there, they happened to have the door open. And that's when I could see the backside of this door. And I could see all this weathering that had gone on to this plywood and the interesting streaks. Uh, so I went back with my camera and it was able to capture these images. And you can see I've isolated there, showing you the different parts of the door that I came up with. But this is a, something, a subject I could spend hours on, coming up with different variations, different compositions, just from this one subject. So another one with the beach. Again, you're starting to see some some, pat, some commonalities in a lot of my photos. I love incorporating curves, but I also love incorporating textures. So like with this, where we have a, some smooth sand on the left and then the rippled sand uh, on the right and then separated by the curve. I love uh, having those intersections in my photos. Uh, go to car shows and this one, a beautifully restored car. I'm not a car guy. I've, I've long since forgotten what type of car this was but I love just the curves and the straight lines. We had some really nice light coming in from the sky, just highlighting 
uh, give me different shades of blue. Uh, and then we see the grass even reflected up there on the chrome fender. So it's just about creating shapes and lines and a pleasing composition. It's not about showing what the whole car was. It was a beautifully restored car. Uh, but I was interested just in these little bit of details. Uh, so back to the beach. Uh, sometimes I go just crazy with uh, no, no rock, no point of focus. It's just this total abstract of just intersection of crazy lines coming together. So looking at those beach scenes, um, I was out in Chicago um, visiting some friends and we're walking by the Chicago River. And this image here on the left is what I saw. Uh, there's some reflections of the buildings and some bri a bridge into the water creating all these little, I call them amoebas, these little organic looking shapes and then some interesting colors there. And so the shot on the left is just kind of right out of the camera. That was kind of what I saw with my eye. And I knew I could do something with it on the computer. I wasn't quite sure exactly what, but I knew I had some, some potential there. Uh, so the image on the right was my first edit of the photo. So you see I've cropped in a little bit, uh, changed up the colors a little bit. I was looking for a specific color palette. Um, and so I was kind of getting closer to what I want, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. I knew there was something more, and so I knew I had to keep, keep working on it. Um, so the final image, you see I cropped in square and I really just went crazy with the colors. They are nowhere close to the natural colors that I saw, but that wasn't important to me. I was creating this kind of abstract, uh, just showing the shapes and the colors and the play off each other. So I kind of talked about a couple different things and now I'll just kind of jump into some more, I call more advanced themes. I call this variations on a theme. And I like this quote from Paul Dermé. Um, he says, to make continuous discoveries in the visual world, one need only look with eyes whose retina, with each blink, become virgin again. And so it's much like that quote from Elliot Erwitt that we started out with, that you constantly need to be revisiting things and looking at things in different ways. So uh, we've already seen some stuff of abstracts, and so I I've never met a tree stump I wouldn't want to photograph. And so here's one uh, here in Longmont, actually. Uh, I was out on a hike with my family, and I saw this uh, fallen down tree. It's been stripped of all of its bark and its branches, but this interesting root ball uh, there at the bottom. And so I took a couple different photos, uh, just kind of getting some abstracts, kind of playing with some shapes in there. And so you can see the, the one photo there, and I've kind of flipped it, and I turned it into monochrome. And that's what I originally had um, as, as my final photo. And then I was uh, talking with a friend of mine, and he had shown me some photos where he created kind of monsters out of these tree roots. Um, and I said, oh, I have some tree root photos. I could probably do something like that. So I went back into my archives and found some of these photos. And so I, I started with this one, and I just doubled it in Photoshop, and then this is the creation I came up with. So it kind of looks like a, uh, I call this like tusk monster, because uh, he's got these kind of horns, kind of like a woolly mammoth or something, horns coming down, the eyes. And again, something you wouldn't see just from the first tree, or not even to the second image, but it's not until I double the image and mirror it that I've created something that just wasn't there to begin with. So taking these things to kind of another level. So here's another one. So I mentioned already about never stop with one photo. I took a lot of different photos of this tree trunk, different composition, different parts of the, the, the root ball there. And so I had this other one. And I was like, wow, then I bet you if that first one worked out well as a double, uh, maybe I could double this one. Um, so I double this one, and wow, I was like, wow, that's a really creepy face. Uh, so again, creating these things, and sometimes when you take the photo, you don't necessarily, you know there's potential, but you're not really sure what you're going to end up with. And so I take the photos, take a bunch of variety, and then I play with them on the computer to get the interesting results at the end. So I've mentioned a little bit about uh, cars and junkyards. So to me, when I drive by this scene here, this is what I, I just get really excited about. Uh, this is on the way to my in-laws, uh, driven by this junkyard for many, many years, seeing these cars with vines and trees growing up and around them and through them. And so I finally got the nerve to stop one day, knock on the owner's door and say, hey, can I, I'm a photographer, can I come wander around your junk? And he's like, yeah, you're not the first photographer to ask that question. I was like, good, I don't feel it too crazy then. Um, so I set up a time to come back uh, to this junkyard. I planned it with a friend because I really didn't want to wander around this, you know, 100-acre junkyard by myself. Uh, didn't feel safe. So I got a friend. We, we scheduled a date to go. And gosh darn it, it snowed. We had like a foot of snow uh, that, that weekend that we had set aside to go up to the junkyard. 
And so I was kind of bummed that you know, we had the snow all over the place. It kind of ruins the, the plans I had. But I said, you know, I can still use this as a, as a, a trial run uh, to go exploring and kind of map out some of the things I thought were interesting. And then I can go back when the weather conditions are better. Um, so I saw this panel truck, and it had this vine growing over it. And so this is just a quick uh, smartphone shot. So I kind of took it and marked it on a piece of paper, like, okay, this is in this part of the property, so I want to make sure I go back to that. But taking that photo, even just this quick snapshot, it's something that I can take home with me and look at, and not just rely on my memory, but look at what's on the phone. I can crop in on it. I can zoom in on it. I can look at different things and say, what, what am I going to do with this scene next time I go back? Um, and so I can do a lot of pre-visualization of what the scene is going to look like. So when I did go back uh, at another opportunity when there wasn't a foot of snow on the ground, um, found the truck again, and this is the photo I came up with. But again, I didn't go into this cold because I'd already been thinking about the photo I'd seen before, the image I took, and I really wanted to play off the vines and the curve of the wheel well and just the, the play of shapes kind of playing off each other. And I ended up going with this sepia conversion just to kind of play on that old, old kind of truck feel. Um, sometimes you just got to again change your perspective. So here I'm standing up in the, the back of this pickup truck, looking back through the back window that has since been broken out, uh, and just really going a little wild with the colors here, this high definition um, photo with multiple photos stacked together. But just showing the, the play of the leaves and the, the vines growing in and around uh, this old truck. I don't need to show the whole truck. We can tell it's a truck. We see the steering wheel there that gives it away. Uh, but it's just trying to find a pleasing composition amongst all the chaos. I saw this, this truck, and, and I liked how it had like a big grin. I think I've been watching that, TV, that movie Cars with my son, uh, where all the cars are animated and they have faces. And so I stood on the back of a car and got down and, and took this kind of grinning uh, grill of this truck. And that was my first thought. And I said, yeah, that's fun. You know, it's whimsical, but... What is it really captured my attention? Was it, was it the gritting face of the truck or was there something else? And so as I kind of trained my mind to study and analyze the scene, I said, you know, what I really liked was that grill. I liked that the blue kind of uh, um, patina on the bottom grill intersecting with the top grill. There was a different angle. It had a bit more rust on it. So then this is the final image I came up with. Again, isolating down just the parts that were most interesting to me. Uh, and then just trying to find order amongst all the chaos. Um, sometimes I do shoot a little wider. So here's another car in the, in the junkyard. Um, and I just love the colors on this one. Very vibrant colors uh, just from all the rust and the various colors that probably been painted over the years. And I'll do detailed shots. Sometimes we don't even need to show whole parts of the car. Just looking for interesting patterns, uh, especially on the doors or the trunks. Um, you get some interesting colors and intersections of colors, especially when you play rust and chipping paint uh, into those. And then after I'd done a lot of those kinds of things, I said, what else can I do with these cars? How can I, I've done some monochromes, I've done some vibrant color ones, I've done close-ups. And I like this one, it's a nice wide shot. And so I did this uh, seven shot HDR uh, to get my, my light throughout the scene. And it looked okay in monochrome. And I said, yeah, but let me do something different. Like everyone else is doing that. I want to make it look my own. And so I decided to bring back a little bit of color in the scene, these little May apple uh, trees there at the bottom. So just little pops of green, just to kind of offset it, just to give it a different look than all the other photos I've been taking at the junkyard. So I, then I, after kind of perfecting that technique a little bit, I'm at this abandoned factory and I want to do the same kind of thing this time bringing back some of the oranges and reds in the machinery. It's not as obvious in this case that this is a monochrome image with the little bits of color pulled back into it um, because I have pulled multiple colors back, uh, but without pulling all the colors, otherwise you would have seen the red fire buckets in the background, some stains of color on the floor from some spilt paint. Uh, so keeping a monochrome, uh, I can hide those things and then just emphasize the color just on the machinery. And then uh, the sunflower I showed in our side by side. So the, the photo on the left is the one that a lot of people take. It's the postcard photos, nice, pretty, happy sunflower. Um, and it's, it's an okay, fine photo. Uh, but I wanted to put my own stamp on it. I want to do something different. And so what, you know, most people show sunflowers in color because they are a very colorful flower. Uh, but I want to show it in a monochrome. 
and so doing this sepia tone to it, it's just something unexpected. Most people don't present photos of sunflowers that way. And so to me, it makes, it feels like it stands out, but like that's something unique to me in my style. So I'll end with one last thing uh, about creativity. We talked a little bit about it in, in this presentation. And so I call this one kitchen drawer exploration. And so one winter, uh, there was a lot of snow on the ground, I was trapped inside, and I really want to go take some photos, but it, it just, the conditions outside weren't right. And so I'd gotten this little macro lens attachment for my smartphone where you just slip it onto the phone and it creates a macro lens. And I said, oh, I could do some interesting stuff here, maybe do some close-up stuff, um, a little exercise. And so I kind of narrowed my focus and well, I'm just going to do things I can find in my kitchen. And so I started taking some pictures with this smartphone and they were all right. It's like, wow, this is really fun. I was like, maybe I should stop and get out my, my macro lens, my tripod, my studio lights, and just really get some really high quality photos out of this uh, exercise. But I discounted that. I said, no, this is a creative exercise. It's not about coming out with award-winning photos. It's about training my mind to see in different ways. And so focusing down on just a minimal amount of hardware is going to allow me to focus on the creative aspect and not get bogged down in the technical. So I stuck with the with the smartphone. So here's a few photos that I came up with. And so when I present this at camera clubs, I, I try to quiz the members to see if they can guess what the different objects are. So this was kind of obvious, uh, this wisp, uh, just like the intersection of all these uh, lines coming together. And then I'm rummaging through my drawers now, I'm trying to find all kinds of things I can find, repeating patterns. Uh, so here's some measuring, stacked measuring spoons. Uh, so just isolating a bit, bit of it to show the curve, show a little bit of light on it, creating some little highlights. And then I found this object, and, and this is one, I love showing this one because it stumps everyone as to what it is. And uh, so some people say it's like suction cups on the bottom of a mat, uh, or some type of something, they can't quite, there's, there, there's no sense of scale. Um, I told you it's something in my kitchen, and it still doesn't necessarily clue people in. So then I show them this photo. I said, well this photo is the same object, but just a different part of the object. And people are still stumped and they say, oh, it's a cheese grater, it's a sift or something. I'm like, no, no, it's not any of those. And I tell them like this, if you cook at home, you have this object in your kitchen. And then it still doesn't clue people in. And I, I amuse myself with this, uh, showing these photos because it just shows that sometimes there's interesting things right in your own kitchen and you just, people don't look at them that way. They don't look at them artistically. They just use them as their function and they don't think about it. And so I hope that that inspires them uh, to look a little more closely at what's around them. And so then I do the great reveal at the end and show that it's just a, season, uh, a seasoning can. And it's just a little flip top uh, there. And people are like, oh, of course, yes, I see it now. But they didn't see it before because it just is out of context and they just, they never looked at things that closely. So I end with this last thing, and we've talked a little bit about this in the presentation, that you know, sometimes, especially with this creative stuff or even the abstracts, not everyone, it's not gonna resonate with everyone. Not everyone's gonna appreciate your vision, appreciate your creativity, or it's just they just don't see it. Um, and so I like this quote, and it says, artistic people create because they have to, whether they are takers or not. And if you want to see more of my work, I hope you check out my website at imagesunderfoot.com. Thanks for stopping by to see my work. Have a great day.